Really? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, don't take my ruler away, I'm good. <laughs> and I'll, I'll show you when I get started here, I'll put this. Uh, but what I do is I just, I, I put it, see, at an angle. This goes down on the paper, so you have to make sure wherever you put it on is dry. So I just put it down like this. Can you see it up on the screen? No. Oh, the screen's not working. What the heck you got? It's warming up. Oh, it's warming up? Okay, so. Anyway, uh, you know, as I say with my classes, I work in your style and I coach you. Don't, don't do I, you don't have to. But there is, there's rules, there's rules I think that we need to follow. And I think I covered that in the very beginning of what I think is so important and what I see constantly. Um, I did judge the Artists of Minnesota show one year, and, and uh, when I got all done giving out the awards, then they said, well, I would be willing to give critiques. Well, good night, I gave a gazillion. And I said to my wife, sound like a big blowhard up here, but you know, I would say to people, people would come to me and they'd go to their painting and they'd say, why didn't I get a ribbon? <laughs> I'll tell you why you didn't get a ribbon. You have no tone value. If you get a little dark in here, if you do a little of this, you can, you know, if you keep your colors, if you don't get any darks, you're going to keep all your colors light because there's something built into our body that tells us, well, now I got to go lighter to make a light color. If you get your darks in there, then you're going to get your light colors dark enough. How's that sound? Huh? Does that make sense? And so, so, and so and he, there was a lot of that uh, when I judged that show. And I said, go home, take it out of the frame, sit down and finish it. Well, I was there the next year as, uh, just entering uh, painting. I had more people come up to me and said, that's exactly what I did. I can't believe it. I can't believe. So, tone value, tone value, tone value. Okay. You can, you can be off a little bit with color, I feel, I feel. But you can't be off with tone value. I think you just, it just, you don't get the tone value, there's no life to your painting. Somebody's gonna walk right by it. Gonna walk right by it. So. Now when I, um, can you, uh, you can see the ruler down there now? Okay. Now when I use it, see I bring it up at a little angle. Can you see this angle, this little bit of angle that I've got here? When I was an illustrator, I actually had a callus on this finger right here because I did a lot of line drawings. And, and we didn't use a pen, we used a brush because it was quicker using a brush. And we could really control the brush. We used a number five um, sable. I think they used to call it, they used to be about a buck and a half back then. So. <laughs> uh, uh, but it, it, so what I do is that, you know, I have my little finger and my thumb on the paper here, and so that way it keeps my ruler from going this way. And then I put my fingers down on the paper, all my fingers go down on the paper, okay? So I just close one eye and I line it up with, with, this, uh, with this line. I don't really care exactly what color it is. I just want to show you how I do it. So what I do is that I run this finger against the ruler. I run this finger against the ruler right there. And, and my uh, little finger actually is on the paper too to help guide. So like this. I mean, it's just, it's just slicker than snot. <laughs> That's it. There. And then if I want, you know, I come in here and maybe I want to, you know, change up this color a little bit. Okay. And I can take that. Because, you know, now I know a lot of watercolorists, 
you know, don't want to have such a hard line. Well, this is the way I'm built, and this is the way I work. Uh, and if you don't want to do it, fine, I don't care. That's all right. It's okay. But let me, I can show you, I can show you the control. So here's a little rigger brush. Let's say I might decide to put lines on this barn. I can put a little shadow. You know these um, these quilt barns. These are on uh, these are on plywood. These are these quilts are painted on plywood. See that? Look at how nice that works. Would you explain how you're touching that ruler again <laughs> without the brush in your hand? What, what fingers are touching that ruler? This is the important one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's this finger right here. This is the important one right there. Where is that? Where's the touch stone? Yeah, right, right, against, right against the edge of this steel oh, roller. Okay. And so as an illustrator, I did so much of it, I actually had a callus. It was almost like probably somebody that plays a guitar probably gets calluses on their fingers from their friends. And then, uh, and then uh, these two fingers, these two fingers are down on the paper. Okay. See? And this one it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's holding, it just uh, come along on the ruler sure. a little bit, okay? Sure, sure. But, but my little, but my hand is actually on the paper. I don't, yeah. if I don't put my hand on the paper, well then I can get a little bit of, right. okay? Right. But I have, uh, I have done this so many times in my life, uh, especially when I was an illustrator. But, so, if, uh, if I decide I'm going to put lines in this barn, now watch, I can really control this. Watch this. Look at that line. So, and then what I can do is that you know, if it's an old barn, then I can come back and you know, kind of touch it and break it a little bit so it doesn't look so, you know, so it looks a little bit more used and abused. Or I may put a, a little bit of color in between, you know, the lines of the barn. So uh, the next thing I would do now is I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to show you that or I'm not going I'm not going to use my paint is still wet, but it's not sopping wet. But here is where I want to uh, I want to get it dark against this light because I want to show you that when you get it dark against the light, you know, my students say, "Oh, my painting looks so muddy." No, it's not muddy. It's not muddy. There's no tone value. Get a dark in there. And when you get a dark against a light color, uh, you don't even have to brighten up that color. It just automatically gets brighter. So on this, uh, on this tree, now I can come back and... Now, as I say, I've mixed some greens. I'll mix, it. I'll mix a green by using a, a yellow and a blue. But every uh, every bit every bit of green in foliage has got a little touch of red in it. Otherwise, it's too bright. It's too unnatural. If you really look at the trees, they're they're really not as green. Springtime, it's kind of fun to watch the trees in the spring. They look a little fresher, and they are a little brighter green. And then in the summer, you know, they're green. And then now towards the fall, they get to be a real dark, dusty green. And then, of course, they turn into fall. Now, I don't, uh, I don't paint out, I don't paint outside, but maybe I do because when I'm in my car, I'm constantly when I'm driving around, you know, I'll, I'll see a tree and I'll look at it, you know, and I'll say, okay, what colors are in there? And I try to figure it out, or I may look at something else, or I'll look at a building and say, well, what color should I use to make that shadow? So I'm kind of sort of painting outside when I'm doing that. See, I'm not just driving. And of course, it drives my wife insane. You don't know where you're going. <laughs> so now, you know, here's, uh, here's where now I would come in. And now I'm, I've got a lot of paint in this brush. It's not soaking wet, but but you see you see it here right here, yeah. And I'm using a dark color, uh, so um, 
I just, I just can't stress enough. Um, I, uh, you know, using these dark colors and using your paint wet. So by me using my paint here wet, is my head in the way? Nope. Okay. All right. See, by using my paint wet, number one, I'm not in a hurry. Not in a hurry. I can think about hopefully what I'm doing. But see, now I can pick this up and see how I can move that around? Or maybe I want to soften this little outer edge a little bit, see? Play with it a bit. So students of mine say to me, I hate to draw. Really? You hate to draw? I'm drawing. I'm drawing. You're drawing all the time. When you have a brush in your hand, you're drawing all the time. So. Um, you know, I will, uh, I do use, but you see how, you see how uh, these dark colors can really work quite nicely. Let me put some dark color against here, so, okay? And what I'm using it is, uh, I mix this with ultramarine blue and uh, cadmium yellow and just a little touch of red in it. Sometimes I'll put a little burnt sienna in it. Because of course burnt sienna is red, it's not brown, it's red. There, see how that works? And I could just keep working this tree just like that, okay? So, you know, let's talk, uh, should I jump down here and see what we can do about this, um, this shadow that everybody, all my students, everybody was squealing about. <laughs> let's see if I can uh, do something with it. You'll notice, I didn't clean my palette off, did I? I didn't clean it. You know, today I just discovered, I never used it before, and that's what that is. That's that, that tint, neutral tint. Oh, that's good. Huh? I've never used it before. It's kind of neat. I always use paint gray if I'm going to do. But I never use paint gray alone. I always, uh, I always doctor it up with something. But this neutral tint is kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting deal. So, there. Let's get this shadow going. Uh, look what happened. Do you see what happened to that color? Man, it really brightens it up. In all actuality, if I were in my studio. I would I would have given this uh, uh, I would have given the barn another coat, but for this tonight I don't need to do that. So. In your studio, do you paint light to dark values usually? I do when I paint with uh, watercolor. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I work with uh, acrylics, opposite. I paint dark to light. Uh, I try, when I'm working on a watercolor, I try to get it dark in there someplace as quick as I can. Because that way it kind of sets, uh, it sets it up, you're not quite as afraid to, to get your darks in. What I'll do sometimes is, one of my students will be working on a painting and I want a place where it's darker, and I'll sneak behind and I'll mix a, a real dark color and I'll just put a touch on there and I said, now you gotta match it. So that kind of moves it forward a little bit. So, you know, we could talk about, uh, let's talk about reflected light a little bit. Now, this could go darker, but you know reflected light is really important. If you think about it, see, I would give this another coat, you know, this, uh, this shadow here would get another coat. But let's talk about reflected light. You have to think about it, the light comes down, it hits the ground and it bounces back. Well, it bounces into this uh, shadow. So instead of having this uh, shadow just really dark, what, see? As I get down towards here, see that? I wanna have a little bit of what we call reflected light. See how that works? So to me, you know, there's, there's a light in the shadow. 